Hey guys, Joseph here once more. Today we are going to do something like this. All right, so we're going to be making use of cloner objects to populate um, and write up a text. That is pretty much what we want to do. So this technique, we're going to be making use of um, dynamics, then cloner object, then just clone this object and over this. So that is what this tutorial is going to be about. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a more text object and call this any letter you want. So in this case, I think we just try, okay, we used A, so let's try an S in this case. And also what I'm doing right here is just setting up my scene. So I'm going to um, go to the cap section, fillet cap, fillet cap be one one so maybe i'll add segments here then i think this is fine this width is fine right here so if i hit n a it's going to n b right there it's going to show me wireframe with edge shaded mode with edge right there so sorry about that so what i'm going to do here is i want to subdivide this equally so the reason why I'm going to subdivide this equally, I'm going to get that in a, in a bit. So we'll come here, increase this, um, maybe five should be fine. Then also come to the interpolation point, change it to uniform, and maybe bring this to five also. Then go to cup, come over to this type, change it from end gun to quadrangles, and regular grid then bring this also to five i think this should be less than five so this for this and also very important we need to check this create single object so this is just setting up the object we are going to collide with all right so let's go to an object we want to fill so we're going to fill this fair could be anything actually could be any shape you want maybe cylinder um, any any object you wish platonic whatsoever so let me hide this in a bit so if what very important you need to go to the orthographic views and make sure that your object is centered inside the inside the um collision object so if i come to this place i also want it to be centered here so this is what I'm going to be having right here. So let's go back to perspective view so I can hide this. So NA, if I hold down control, make sure I have my sphere object selected. Hold down control and I click on cloner. So what that would do is that it's going to create a cloner object and put it in the same spots where I have my shape. So I don't want the cloner somewhere. I want it to be right here. If I bring this down, I have this. So in this case, what we want is we don't want to have any positioning. So we're going to bring the position back to zero. We want the count to increase. So let's increase this to 150. So at frame zero, we want to have a zero count. And at frame, let's say 120, let's try maybe 500 count. And also for speed purpose, I'm going to bring this segment down to 16. And also for the cloner, I'm going to click on render instance. So if I play this now, oh, sorry, I need to record that. Okay, that's been recorded. So if I play this, you notice we have this. We are not seeing the whole 20 counts. Okay, and the reason is because these spheres have been added on top of one another. So that is where the simulation rigid tag comes in place. So if I, if I click here, right click on it and I go to simulation tag, rigid body. And for the rigid body, in my collision, I'm going to change inheritance to apply to children and take this to top. Then if I play now, I'm going to have this scattering. So this is the first thing I'm going to have. 
this is nice also if this is what you want fine but since this is not what we want we want this to hold itself so what we'll do is go to the first tab we use follow position and rotation to hold this object so if i go to three three so the way this value works is that the higher the value the more the force that is going to use to hold it together so that is what that is used so if i play this through now you see hold its position they're trying to come down but then the force is holding them together so that is fine so if you reduce this value to two by two you notice they start falling even more all right so that solves that part so the next thing is to make this object collide with the shape that we have here so if you go to this subject you right click on the mode text you go to simulation tab go to collider objects so for this collider object if i play now I'm going to notice that it doesn't collide. Okay, this collides, that's fine. But we have, you can notice that it looks like it's colliding, but it comes out of the object. Okay, so it start colliding here, then comes out. And the reason why we're having it, even though this is inside the shape, is because we need to change one more thing in the collider tag. And that is the way Cinema 4D interprets this object as a collision object so is the automatic doesn't really give you a good representation so instead what we we'll do is we change this shape under the collision tab from automatic to static mesh so this will interpret it more for us to know that this is an object so you can see if i hide this you notice it start creating the shape all right so the playthrough it creates that shape to covers this okay all right so maybe the positioning is not too cool because now it takes longer for it to get to this top so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this guy to somewhere here and also change this so i think that's fine so if we replay that you notice that it covers it completes very fast so that solves that part so but if you look through this object you notice this looks so uniform and i don't like that two issues here the spheres are the same size the other thing is there is this uniformity here i don't like that i want to break this uniformity so that is where this comes in handy remember i said I wanted to break this guy into equal size and this subdivision. So I'm going to select this Motex object, hold down shift, add a displace deformer, displacer here. So under the displacer, you go to the shading tab, right click and sorry, click here and add a noise. So it just breaks this down. You notice what is happening here. This is welded together. The reason why it's welded together is just because of this thing I told you right here make single object if i was if it was not checked you notice that this guy has this issue so we're going to have problem with this simulation so that is why this is very handy very important for you to make them equal the other thing is that the displacement is too much so we need to resolve that so if i click here and change this noise increase the global scale so let's try 250 um, I think 150 should do well. Let's try 200. Okay, I think this is not bad. Then we can also change the seed. So we are fine. I think this works for me. Then the other thing I'm going to do is the noise is still too much. So we'll go to the object tab, reduce this height. So if we make this height 4, we notice that there is displacement on this is not too accurate and that is what we're looking for so na takes us back to shaded mode so if you re-simulate this you notice what we have so the shape you can see this place is broken down it doesn't really give us this accurate shape right here okay so if you come here also you can see this push pushes it in a little bit so that is one of the things that i did and the other thing is i still have this equal shapes here 
So what we'll do with this is just select the cloner, add an effector to it, so we'll add a random effector. So because I have this cloner selected, it automatically brings this here. But if not, if you didn't have this cloner selected, and you just add a, a, an effector here, it's going to bring the effector here, but then we don't have any effect. So we have to manually go to this effector and drag this here. All right? So it's very good for you to hold on the cloner. So what we want to do under this effector is, effector is we don't want to change the position. We don't want to randomize the position. We want to randomize the scale. So if we bring the scale to point um, three here about, and go back to the start and replay, you notice that some of these objects are small while some are large. So let's bring it to four and simulate this again. So that solves this problem. Okay. So we have that. If you look through, you, you can see the effect we get to have here. All right. So other thing you would do is that, because right now if I play, scroll this back, we have issues here. So that is why you need to always cache your simulation. So there are two ways you can do that. You can either cache it through this place or you can... Now, the thing with this is that if you are caching a simulation for a MoGraph object using this method, you will always go back if you try to replace. So what we'll do is add a MoGraph um, tag cache to it. So you cache it through this knot here. So if you cache it through this, it gives you a good result so you can scroll back. The other way is by going to the project settings. So if you go to the project setting, you have cache. This caches every simulation, every, every dynamic simulation in your scene. So if you have a um, more ground simulation, you have an object-based simulation, dynamics and everything, it caches everything together. This is just for this more graph object, all right? So, but before we start caching this, we don't really need this, okay? So before I start caching, I'll go to Control-D, come to General, um, nothing here, under the X part, I'm going to change the step per frame to 15. This increases, it makes my simulation more accurate. Then for the error threshold, we're going to bring this down to reduce the error. Then I think that's fine. Then we can cache this. So let's cache this. Click on this page. Cache is that simulation. So let's just wait for this to be done. Then we'll check what we have. Oh, okay. All right, so let's play through. So we have this and this covers. You can notice what we have there. So the good thing with this is that you can scroll forward and backwards. So that is that. So if you look at this, you have your objects and fills the shape. So whatever shape you want, that's what this object is going to feel. So um, I just thought I should share this. So let's, for instance, you want to fill in an object with a um, simulation tag and dynamics. So you can just fill the object with dynamics applied to it. And that's how you can get that. All right. So if you feel this was helpful, please do give me a like and a thumbs up because it helps me and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe because i do tutorials like this every time so do have a wonderful day and god bless you bye